Hey guys, welcome back to The Hunting Ground. Today we have a pretty cool video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Now that we've come in here and we've sprayed Roundup, we've killed off most of the weeds in the area, now we're going to come in with the tractor we're going to break up the top portion of the soil so it's ready to plant. Now we've gone through a food plot and we've dissed it and we've made sure we've eliminated the competition by spraying Roundup. Now we're going to go in with our antler dirt and we're going to spread it out and um, to fertilize this food plot. And uh, for this antler dirt, this is a pelletized product and it's about 100 pounds per thousand um, square feet. And so we're about a quarter of an acre here and so this um, thousand pounds is going to be perfect um, for a food plot here. And we're going to spread this out today, and uh, one thing you guys will notice in my videos, I try to get everybody involved, try to introduce everybody to outdoors. And so my sister is here along with some of her friends, and we're going to be um, getting them all together and spreading out this, uh, this fertilizer just by hand. We're going to take two and a half gallon buckets, and we're just going to kind of spread it out evenly, but um, it gets done a lot quicker with a lot more help. It, everyone. It was awesome. It was short. Simple. It was easy. Simple. Yeah. yeah. Didn't smell bad. Maybe she yeah, can get bad. her first deer on here this year. There you go. Now we finished spreading a fertilizer on our food plot, but what you guys didn't see on video is we left one section of our food plot untouched by the fertilizer. Now we're doing this to compare um, how our food plot's going to grow with the fertilizer and without the fertilizer. One thing you need to make sure of if you're going to do a controlled area like this, um, dealing with fertilizer, is that your controlled area is um, uphill from the rest of your food plot. Because that's what we're trying to make sure of here, because this is our highest point in this food plot. Now if we were to put fertilizer here, it would end up running down to our controlled area if it was further downhill. But since it's uphill, um, this fertilizer is not going to run into it, it's not going to affect it at all, it's going to remain uh, very controlled. So now if you decide to go with the White Tail Institute products like we have in this food plot, one good thing I like about the White Tail Institute is they also have these herbicides which you can um, use in your food plots if you have any invasive weeds kind of coming in. And this is not going to affect your, um, your products that you bought from the White Tail Institute and say so it's going to go out and just thin out the weeds. And um, uh, they have two here, they have the Arrest and Slay is what we'll use on this food plot. Right now we're just going to use the Arrest because it's mainly dealing with the grasses and that's what we have coming up in the clovers right now. Um, the Slay is really dealing with the more broader leaves. Now cost wise, sometimes it's a little bit more cost effective to go ahead and buy these herbicides and try to retake a food plot instead of starting from scratch because when you start from scratch you're buying the seed, you're going to buy the fertilizer. It's the whole process starting all over again, whereas if you just go ahead and buy the herbicides, you may be dropping $20 to $40 and um, using the water to mix it in. So sometimes it can be a little bit more cost effective to go ahead and do this instead of starting from scratch. Now we've gone in and we've sprayed our herbicides to eliminate the competition in this food plot. Now we're going to go in and plant some of the seed in some of those areas that are having too much trouble that are bare soil or there was a lot of weeds that have been killed out now. Now originally this food plot was just a clover plus mix from the Whitetail Institute, but in some of these troubled areas we're going to go back in, we're going to plant a chicory clover plus mix because deer are browsers. They like to have a wide variety of stuff to eat in the area, so this is going to give them a little bit more variety in this food plot. Now as you can see, uh, the clover seeds are really small seeds, so whether you're using a handheld spreader or a spreader on the back of a four-wheeler, you need to be careful that you have that setting really low because otherwise it's going to spread out too thick. 
Now when you're spreading your seed, be sure that you don't spread it too thick because then you're just going to defeat your whole purpose of spreading any seed. Um, by spreading it too thick, you're going to create competition within the same plant and it's not going to grow to its full potential. So be sure that you do not overseed. Right here you can really see the two different sides of the food plot. On this side we have the lush clover area. On this side it's kind of sporadic weeds with some um, clover spots within it. What we're going to try to do is make this a uniform, well-grown clover food plot. Now here's a quick little update. As I told you, I'd be updating you on areas that we've already done some work on on the property. This area behind me, this is where we did our prescribed burn. I told you guys that the forage would be coming in really good in a couple weeks, and it really has. It's been um, starting to green up really good right now, especially in the spring weather. And uh, today we watched, you know, four or five deer come through the area and just kind of browse. And it's really tender forage, so the deer like to stay in here. And they really spent a lot of time in here this morning. So. Um, keep up to date and we'll keep showing you the progress on this area. Guys, thanks for joining us on the Hunting Grounds. Um, be sure to check out my blog site and be sure to tell your friends. And as always, have a better than average day.